What's up, y'all? It's Calvin here, and I wanted to give you guys an update on the food shortages. And for a while here, there wasn't really a whole lot of reporting on it. And then right out of the blue, there seems to be a lot of stories popping up now. But um, McDonald's Japan, they are rationing out fries. And um, this has a lot to do with the flooding that is going on in Vancouver. There's like a rail road crossing or something like that that has been uh, taken out. And so that is creating some issues for them to where they have to ration out their food. And what they're doing is just selling small fries. Um, no medium or large fries are being sold. Also, there is a pending egg shortage in Massachusetts. And there's also some shortages that are dealing with the same type of situation in uh, California. There are these rights bills for animals that are being put in place and it's basically um, like these uh, farmers and uh, whatnot, they have to give their animals a certain amount of space to be able to turn around. And I believe in California, their pork industry, which is actually a good thing, is getting hit hard because, you know, they've got the pigs packed in there where they can't even turn around and stuff like that. So because of these laws that are being uh, put in place, it is going to shortstop some... Uh, food supplies all right and and once again pork is an unclean food and i'm completely for that it should be out of the food cycle completely but at any rate there are a lot of people that eat that stuff and it is going to devastate them and it's i i have no problem with the law to be able to give these animals spacing to be able to turn around and you know what not to have good conditions because better situation for them would produce better food for us but the thing that gets me is the timing of it all. Like they're just now starting to do this stuff when we're, you know, almost two years into a pandemic and we're having all of these issues and then they just lump this on top of the whole situation. Like that's the funny part about this whole situation. Just wanted to put that out there to let y'all know that this situation is heavily being created by the moves of the people in power. Also, there are some things that are happening because of inflation. There's a lot of schools that are struggling to buy food because of the inflation. And once again, this is a man-made created situation. And like for the life of me, I don't know why the business owners won't come together. And when they raise up the prices, they come together and say, hey, we ain't paying that price. It's like it's an easy fix. But for whatever reason, it seems like nobody will do it. But uh, I don't know. It's just just crazy. But at any rate, moving on. Something else that is happening because of inflation is that the UN, meaning the United Nations, you know, one of the largest power structures on the planet, um, they are cutting funding for food aid to Yemen. And one of the reasons that they're saying is inflation. And you have to understand, like. There's governments involved within the UN that can control prices and things of that nature, but yet they're just going right along with the script of allowing these prices to raise up. They can easily just lower them, and on top of the fact that, like, these countries can print money, you know what I'm saying? Like, these people have the power to print the money, you know, but uh, won't do none of that. They'll just cut food aid. Something else that is curious about the whole situation in Yemen is that the uh, U.S. Navy they have reported that they just confiscated some uh, some uh, guns that they say are most likely coming from Iran to Yemen, okay? And so on one end, you have them cutting funding for food aid in Yemen, and then on the other end, you're taking away their guns so they can't protect themselves. So once you take a step back and see the whole picture, you can kind of ascertain of what is really going on in Yemen. Next, we have the Philippines, and um, they've recently had two people die of dehydration, and they're also suffering from water and food shortages. And um, I just mainly wanted to bring them up, you know what I'm saying, to just let people know, if you pray, pray for the Philippines, you know what I'm saying, as well as Yemen and the rest of the world that are suffering far more than we can because there's not much that people can do about war ravaged countries and typhoons like if you're growing your food and a typhoon comes through you know what i'm saying it's going to completely destroy your food your house so on and so forth so there's you know there's there's really no preparation for that 
And, uh, you know, I know times are tight, so I'm not going to ask people to give money. But it, if, if you have it impressed upon your heart to do so, help these people out because it, it's them right now. And sooner or later, it's going to be us. And when it hits America, it may not hit everywhere. It may just hit your area like the people in Mayfield, Kentucky. And you're not going to want to be around a bunch of people that are indifferent saying, oh, it ain't me. You know what I'm saying? You are going to want at least some positive energy. So please send prayers out that way because they need it. Like it is a bad situation out there. And the Filipino people, they don't need much, man. They really don't. They're very resilient and they're very resourceful. So anything would help these guys. And something else that I wanted to bring out about the Philippines situation is that Folks can look at this and say, how could somebody die of dehydration surrounded by water? Because Philippines is an island, all right? Or excuse me, a series of islands. And this goes back to the scripture that knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of our times. And uh, this is why I encourage you guys to start downloading information of the stuff that you don't know. Because... You could easily sit back and make fun of them, but do you know how to purify your own water? And if the answer is no, then, you know what I'm saying, thank your lucky stars that you have the opportunity now to seek out that information and put it in practice so that way if you do come into a situation, you can, you know, sur sur survive yourself and also be a blessing to other people. And lastly, something that's got a lot of people scrambling is that there are pet food shortages and most people, they like their animals more than they like people. The alternative as far as the uh, people problem is for the people to start growing their own food. And it's no different when it comes to pet food. And just real quick, I have a few foods that my dog can eat. And I have a Frenchie. And uh, Frenchies are a pretty sensitive palate, digestive system and stuff like that. So uh, I'll just list a few things that Frenchies can eat. And that is fennel, lettuce, peas. And when it comes to the peas, if it's a, a canned peas, wash them really, really good in water because canned peas are usually soaked in salty water or seasoning, stuff like that. So it would be best not to feed your dog canned peas, but if that's all you have, soak them in water really, really good and really try to get the salt content out of there because it can be harmful to Frenchies at least and I know everybody doesn't have a Frenchie but once again I can't go through the list of every dog so I'm just listing some of the things that my dog can eat and lastly pumpkin um, and when it comes to pumpkin uh, it will be better for it to be canned and cooked all right with no seeds no skin or nothing like that and there are plenty of websites and blogs and stuff like that that are specific to your dog that you know has list of you know um vegetables that your dog can and can eat like like for instance uh garlic is uh toxic to uh frenchies as well as kale sweet potatoes um shallots rhubarb you shouldn't feed that to your dog or potatoes um those are one of the things which is really disappointing because i um, happen to be growing quite a bit of of uh some uh purple potatoes right now but uh i can't feed it to my dog so I'm just going to have to pivot and reassess the situation when it comes to my backup plans for my uh, dog. And so, um, you know, I advise you guys to take the time to do the same thing because, you know, you, you wouldn't want your, your animal or anyone that is in your household to suffer because of a lack of knowledge. So count your blessings that you are seeing these things early and uh, that you have the time to be able to make some moves because, as I said before, like the people in Yemen and the folks that went through the tornado and things of that nature, like once it hit, like that's what it was. They are left to deal with the devastation. And, uh, you know, that that type of thing run across my mind all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? What am I going to do if I'm left with absolutely nothing? You know what I'm saying? So uh, hopefully you guys are out there racking your brains for resourceful things that you'll be able to do in times of uh, crisis, you know what I mean? Uh, per particularly as men, you know what I'm saying? Because it's it's not just your family that is going to de depend on you. It is going to be the community in general. Um, we are 
we as men are going to have to be a buffer between whatever the world and life is throwing at us and the people uh, around us, whether you like it or not, you know what I'm saying? Because trust me, you know, the day before the storm in Kentucky or in uh, the, the Philippines, um, you know, life was good. And then next thing you know, you are, you're forced to depend on people that you, you know, probably don't even particularly like, you know what I'm saying? But these are the times that we're in, man. So it's, it's just, it's better to be, have the mindset to be a part of your community than rather than to separate yourself you know what i mean because like with those potatoes that i am growing i'm hoping that i can grow enough for me and my household and to help someone else and that's with everything that i'm growing you know what i'm saying and god willing i'll be able to get get some seeds and stuff like that to grow some things that dogs can eat and it is going to be the same principle because one thing about dogs if you take care of them they will take care of you you know what i'm saying and my little guy will definitely stand up when it's time so um oh also something else that i wanted to uh bring up is that now will be the time to start testing out different things that your dog can eat because um for me i stay in a, an apartment complex and we got to pick up our dog poop and with my particular dog um Whenever we change up this diet, you know what I'm saying, uh, picking up his poop is kind of like picking up finger paint off of a fresh finger painting. You know what I'm saying? So um, keep that in mind. So like, it, it kind of takes a while to get it to where it's, you know, solid, where we can just scoop it up and like go. Otherwise, it's just, you know, you uh, might as well get a shovel. I hope this resonates with you guys. This is the Power Rose. Give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm.